Good morning. Wanted to record another short video here for EMS Week. I'm out in my backyard again. We're still on semester break, but we'll be back in a day or two and you'll see me in my office then. Um, people often ask me, what is an EMT? What is a paramedic? What is an ambulance driver? What exactly do we call ourselves? And that's a really good question, and I don't even know if we have a really good answer for that. The term ambulance driver is kind of a derogatory term for many people in EMS. We feel we have been through a lot of training, which we have, and we do much more than just drive an ambulance. <clears throat> so we, we sometimes get a little offended by that term. Now those of us that have been ar around a while, it's not as big of a deal. Yes, I'm a paramedic. Yes, I've had to do a lot of training. Does it bother me to be called an ambulance driver? If that's what the family calls me, that's what they call me. Uh, but there are four nationally recognized levels to EMS. The first one is emergency medical responder, and this is typically about a 40-hour course. It teaches you the basics of life-saving and CPR. You teach bleeding control and tourniquets and splinting, and most of the uh, really important stuff to saving a life and maybe stabilizing someone until uh, further care can get there. This is a really good level for many of our, our firefighters or volunteer firefighters. I know a lot of our paid fire departments go with EMT level, but the emergency medical responders is really a good level for that. It gives them what they need to stabilize someone until the ambulance can get there. It's about 40 hours in training. Uh, we do teach it at the college. We haven't taught it much because we usually leave it up to the fire departments to provide that training level up is the EMT level and this is kind of considered the, the first level in most people's minds when we think of ambulances because to work or ride on an ambulance you have to be an EMT and this is typically a semester long class it requires a lot more training and covers more than just the basics of stabilization. Uh, we have a little bit of pathophysiology, anatomy and physiology, those big terms we like to use, pharmacology. Uh, we have to learn all those topics, or a little bit about those topics. And we cover the, the same stuff as emergency medical responders as far as tourniquets and bleeding control and splinting and childbirth. And at the EMT level, we even add a few medications like aspirin and oxygen and glucose that they can administer. The next level up is the advanced EMT. And there's a lot of confusion about this one in the state of Alabama because in Alabama, you first have to become an EMT before you become a paramedic. And it used to be you had to be an EMT, then an advanced EMT, and then a paramedic. And we no longer require that. You can go straight from EMT to paramedic. So many people feel we've just done away with advanced EMT. And that's not true. We still offer it. We still teach it. We still have a few students every semester that are interested in it. It is still um, a fairly intensive program, one semester long, so it's similar to EMT and that it's, it's just one semester. You do have to be an EMT to become an advanced EMT though. It, it goes f into further depth as far as your pharmacology and your physiology and pathophysiology because at the advanced EMT, we are learning to give some medications to help stabilize a patient such as naloxone and D50 for hypoglycemia, diabetics, and a few other medications um, and with doing some more advanced airways for those that aren't breathing on their own. The top level of emergency care is the paramedic. And the paramedic has to go through three additional levels, or I'm sorry, three additional semesters of training. And this entails a lot more uh, education as far as physiology, anatomy, pathophysiology, pharmacology, medical and trauma emergencies, just a lot more that they have to learn. In addition, there is a large clinical component where they have to do observational hours in pediatrics and obstetrics and ICU, CCU, surgery, to work on airways. We have to do a lot of hours in the emergency department, a lot of hours on the ambulance, followed by a very extensive clinical preceptorship in which you ride as a paramedic with a paramedic sort of watching over your shoulder to make sure you don't make any mistakes. But you run the calls and we have someone there watching you to make sure that you can do it. And we do all this before we turn you loose. And once you have completed all of this successfully, you can take the National Registry exam. Sometimes I'm asked exactly what does a paramedic do? And in addition to all the things that EMTs, emergency medical responders, and advanced EMTs can do, we have a much more extensive knowledge of physiology, pathophysiology, and that allows us to do many more things as far as uh, a long list of medications we can administer to help uh, more advanced airways, more advanced cardiology, so we can do 12 leads and help interpret your rhythms and see what's wrong, and other more advanced skills. So there's a lot to being a paramedic. So again, there's four levels, 
of pre-hospital provider. There's the emergency medical responder, EMT, advanced EMT, and paramedic. So if you ask me what are we or what to call us, we could be any one of those four. So I think a lot of people just say ambulance driver because it's easiest versus trying to figure out exactly which of the three or four levels that we are. I hope that helps explain a little bit about what EMS providers do and all that we have to do to become the level that we are. Uh, if you're interested in such education, we offer it at Northwest Shoals. Um, one of the things to look for when, when selecting a program to train to become an EMT or a paramedic is you'd like to find one that is accredited. That means that we have an outside agency that comes in and reviews everything that we do and everything that we have and all of our equipment and all of our support services to make sure that we are providing the best possible education that you can. So if you want the best education you, you can get, I think at Northwest Shoals, because we are accredited, is probably your best bet. If you have any questions, please message me or call me or call our offices. We look forward to talking to you and answering any other questions. I look forward to having another video out tomorrow on a little bit more about EMS. Happy EMS week!